So this one's about Ephilism, how it's often viewed as just, you know, this completely hostile and antagonistic product of a depressed mind. It's just too negative to be believed, I guess, is how it's often viewed. You know, a real just ethical analysis that you do in your head that makes total sense. I think holding an Ephilist viewpoint is totally uh, compatible with having like a, a happy and fulfilled life for the individual. You can still enjoy your music, enjoy your art, even though you recognize that life is just this replicating molecule, that it really doesn't have any innate meaning, that your subjective experience is just that subjective experience. You still feel it, you still have needs, and it's, it's, it's not reasonable to just expect people to just kill themselves, just realize that life is just a silly broken game and just kill themselves. Now, obviously, sex and all this is a part of nature. I mean, it's none of this is uh, what's being disputed here. It's just this one ethical question, procreation, you know, this thing that a lot of people view as beautiful and a miracle, and it's just a simple ethical analysis. Children who don't yet exist are not being deprived of anything. They're not suffering, they're not in need they have no need and when you bring them into existence now they're this physical thing that is decidedly a need machine it needs I mean it's it's really a simple ethical analysis it's not just something some angry guy made up you know to try to inflict guilt on you for your nature it's just something that did happen naturally this replicating molecule after billions of years it evolved like this and now we have these um, drives and whatnot this mechanism that causes it to perpetuate but, I mean, we can use intellect to see that ethically it's really not good if you really think about it deeply, if you're going to be honest with yourself about it, not just indulge in pleasant fantasies. And that we have the tools, we have the ability to not do it, that we can prevent it. Life has already been imposed upon you. You're here, and it would be unreasonable to expect you to just kill yourself or to just be miserable for no reason. I mean, of course, to a reasonable extent, but I mean, you know, indulging in music and art and having your nice little ideas and philosophies, that's all fine. It's just uh, when it leads to actions and decisions, you know, that inflict inevitable suffering and, you know, these unnecessary impositions on more life, that's really the only place where there's any qualm with how you want to do what you will with your own existence. Just stop imposing it on more people. Not everyone sees it the same way you do and there's really no point for all the suffering because there's no end goal you know you getting to experience parenthood and this and that you know and feel something is dependent on you right and it's cute and you love it and it loves you I mean it's all happy and fun but I mean this desire to continue your family bloodline or whatever it's just a temporal desire it's just a mechanism to get you to reproduce whenever you die that desire will be gone but the life that you impose still remains that life doesn't see through it and it continues to perpetuate and for no good reason. I mean, we can see that this is a rigged, broken game. There's no end goal. It's not going anywhere. Just rationally, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it's just, we just make a rational analysis just like we would with anything else in our lives. And uh, of course, being a hard determinist, you do have to concede that, you know, all ideas and all viewpoints and, you know, every action is product of the physical brain there's no freedom there's no you know I mean the people who are disagreeing here I mean it's a mechanism in their brain you know that's dissonance they get this idea and it doesn't fit well with their idea of existence and value they don't like it and you know they just deny it obviously the implications of epilism are a little depressing I mean you you realize that you know that the value that we place on life doesn't precede the life it's life evolved and developed over time and most humans that live now you know have some sort of conception of value in it but I mean it's not inherent there was no value before the sentience this argument being laid out this why create a need machine I mean, can you justify that why is it good and why would it not be better to not do it since life entails inevitable suffering at least at some point even though it's more limited for some people than others there is a lot of agony to be experienced and that is experienced every day in the world and there's no real good reason for it and we have the ability to stop it.